Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 10. In this tutorial we will look at recognizing revenue on profitable long-term construction contracts. However, the contract in this case will have a loss in one year. We will be looking at how to account for such a contract under both percentage of completion and completed contract approaches. We have three learning objectives for this tutorial. First, to determine the gross profit of a profitable long-term contract with a loss using the percentage of completion and completed contract approaches. Second, as with previous tutorials, we'll be looking at the journal entries for the profitable contract with a loss using both percentage of completion and completed contract approaches. And finally, illustrate how to prepare a partial balance sheet and income statement presentation for profitable long-term contracts with a loss, again under both percentage of completion and completed contract approaches. This tutorial is based on the Putty Inc. B example. It's a variation of the Putty Inc. A example that was used for the previous tutorial, but this time the data has changed so that we can show a loss in one year. Please be sure to download the correct file so you can follow along. This tutorial will focus on requirement one and two of the Putty Inc. example, emphasizing accounting for presenting the results of fully profitable long-term contracts with a loss under both percentage of completion and completed contract approaches. As with previous tutorials, we show the data as presented, and the only thing that's changed is the 2021 estimated cost to complete. In order to create a situation where we have a contract loss in one year, we increased this value from 2.7 million to 5 million. So presenting it both on a per year basis or a cost incurred in each year. Also, you could see this data presented like it is on the right here where we have a cumulative approach so that the costs incurred to date become additive. Uh, but again, the costs to complete are still $5 million. So because we only made the change to the data in 2021, our gross profit and any of the calculations for the year 2020 remain the same and the gross profit under the completed contract approach is still zero whereas it's 250,000 for the percentage of completion approach but now we in 2021 is where we introduce how the data changes if we say that we have cumulative cost to date of 4.8 million dollars which is the sum of 1 million in 2020 plus 3.8 million in 2021 and then we bring down the estimated cost to complete so the total estimated project costs are 9.8 million dollars and then we have enough information now to determine the percentage complete if we take 4.8 million dollars divided by 9.8 million we get 48.98 percent and so if we multiply that by the contract price we get 48.98 in cumulative revenue to date uh, remember that we carry over the previous uh, revenue recognized to date so we have to subtract this 1 million 250 to give us revenue to recognize of 3.648 million dollars and then we still have to subtract the costs incurred during the year this $3.8 million carries forward down here. This results in a loss instead of a gross profit in 2021. The contract is still expected to be profitable because you have a $10 million contract price minus $9.8 million in costs. So the contract is still expected to be profitable to the tune of $200,000. So we don't need to worry about anything else. So it's okay to incur profit in one year and a loss in the next. Under the completed contract approach, because the contract still is expected to be profitable, the gross profit in 2021 is also zero. If we go and review the journal entries for 2020, there is no change from the previous tutorial because the estimated cost to complete changed in 2021. So all of these journal entries are still the same and are posted to our T accounts. So here is our million in costs, our gross profit of 250,000 and the billings and the accounts receivable. And in terms of the presentation of our balance sheet and income statement for 2020, these stay exactly the same. We still have account receivable balance of 75,000 and recognized revenues in excess of billings of 500,000. And that's the difference between the amount that's carried in the construction and process account minus the billings.
Our construction revenue is $1.25 million, and the construction expense is $1 million, giving us gross profit of $250,000. So again, no change from the previous tutorial. Now we go on to the 2021 journal entries, and we'll see that because of the change in estimated total costs, we do have some numbers that changed. So the items that changed are highlighted in yellow. So what I'm referring to a change is are the journal entries from tutorial eight. So the construction and progress for the costs of 3.8 million didn't change. We still have accounts receivable and billings collection, but this time based on the revised estimated total cost to complete, we had that $152,000 loss. And so that loss has to be adjusted to the construction and progress. So we record the revenue of 3.648 million, the costs, and our construction and progress gets the different plug basically. This leaves us with a revised balance versus tutorial eight of 4,898,000, which would be offset against 3,750,000 to be reported on the balance sheet. Now on to our balance sheet and income statement for 2021. Our accounts receivable is still 375,000 and that hasn't changed from any of the other previous scenarios. What has changed though is our recognized revenues and excess of billings. Of course, recalling from the previous tutorials that this is now current because it's a three year contract and one year is left. So there is no non-current portion. The entire portion is classified as current and that's based on our CIP balance of 4,898,000 less billings of 3,750. And then of course our construction revenues are 3,648. Our construction costs or expenses of 3.8 million, giving us a loss of 152,000 this year. And so you can see that between the two years, we had a profit last year. The contract is still profitable, but we're just showing a loss in 2021. And that can happen. You can have contracts that are profitable, that show positive gross profit in one year, a loss in the next, and then a profit in another year. As long as the contract is profitable overall, then we don't have to worry about it. So now we can proceed with our last year, 2022, starting the same approach, cost to date of 7,800,000. Those are cumulative costs, those haven't changed, except, uh, and of course, now that our contract is complete, we have no additional costs, so the total estimated costs to complete, in this case, it's the same as the actual costs, are 7.8 million. The contract is 100% complete. Our contract price is 10 million, so that gives us cumulative revenue to date of 10 million, and then we subtract the revenue to date from the previous year, so taking off 4,898,000 leaves us uh, revenue to recognize 5,102 less the costs incurred of 3 million, giving us a gross profit of 2,102. And we can prove that what we have is correct here because we've got our $250,000 gross profit from 2020, the loss of 152,000 in 2021, and then the remaining gross profit in 2022 equals 2.2 million, which is the correct amount of profit on the entire contract because we have a $10 million contract price and $7.8 million in costs. From a completed contract perspective, this one's easy. Again, for 2020 and 2021, there is no gross profit recognized and all of the gross profit is therefore recognized in 2022. 2.2 .2 million, again, contract price minus costs is total profit on the contract and we're completed. So to review our 2017 journal entries under percentage of completion, again, these have not changed. The only things that changed are what we have highlighted in yellow. So our revenue of 5,102, our costs are the same, giving us gross profit on the contract in 2022. That means that when we post these to our construction and progress account, we have a beginning balance from 2021 of 4,898 plus the construction costs plus the gross profit leaves us with a balance of 10 million in the account at the end. And guess what? That should net itself out against the billings and it does. Then we have our final entry to clear out the billings and the construction and progress accounts. So that didn't change and the resulting balances will be zero. And then finally for our last balance sheet, 
Again, we have accounts receivable of 125,000, so that's remaining to be collected between the billings and the collections, that's what's left. Now the contract is complete and fully billed. There are no revenues that are recognized in excess of billings, so the balance is now zero. And of course, because there was no non-current portion, there's nothing showing there as well. At this point, this hasn't changed from any of the previous balance sheets. And in essence, the only thing that changed from the previous scenarios was this number here. Then in terms of the income statement, if you go back and you should be able to confirm these numbers, of course, from both the journal entries and the schedule that we did under percentage of completion, our contract revenue is 5,102. The costs are 3 million, leaving gross profit of 2,102. And this contract is finished. The second part of the Putty B example is to do the same as in the first requirement except under the completed contract approach and we had included in the illustration of calculation of the gross profit in the previous slides under this tutorial what the gross profit would look like under completed contract approach but the good news is under the completed contract approach for a profitable contract with a loss in one or more years as long as the contract is still profitable then the gross profit the journal entries and the financial statement presentation is the same as a fully profitable contract and now for some key points to remember first under the percentage of completion approach again which is applicable to both ifrs and aspi long-term construction contracts that are profitable overall may incur losses in any particular year it's okay you can have just like in this case we had a, a loss in 2020 a loss in 2021 and then finally a profit in 2022. the accounting is the same as for a fully profitable contract except for a credit to construction in progress and a debit to construction expenses for the current year construction expenses plus the difference to reach any required cumulative contract profit and finally under the completed contract approach with an overall fully profitable contract no adjustments are made and in the years leading up to the final year of construction the gross profit is zero all the construction revenues and expenses are recorded in the year of completion and the accounting is exactly the same as for a fully profitable contract so this concludes tutorial 10 on using the percentage of completion approach to account for a profitable contract with a contract loss in one year.